wanting something from a, an infant. A Gentile pagan. Wise, but not Christian. Not even Jewish. That's the part I think that we miss. It's more likely that Christ was one and all the people, he inquired to them where the Christ was to Christ, the Messiah being born. And so the wise men come and they bring gifts from Herod. And the closer they get, I believe, the more.
And so they take these three gifts. Gold, and that, by the way, we, are, we know what a bait and switch is, right? You give them good news to follow, and then you follow it up with worse news. So the gold was the bait. You're smelling frankincense and myrrh. And the number one sense that allows us memory is our sense of smell. You may like the smell. You may dislike the smell. Either way, you're right. Because if the bait was the gold, the frankincense and the myrrh were the switch. When, when we see other churches using it, spices and the incense that are given to the dead, it starts to make a little more sense. Frankincense and myrrh were part of that which was burned and lifted up to mask the scent of a decaying body. It was also a way of honoring the dead. And so there's your little message from King Herod that you may not have known. He says, I aim to kill you. <coughs> have you ever heard that before? And so when the women went to the tomb, they went with spices and frankincense and myrrh. And so today, in your smelling, again, whether you like it or not, you're right. Because it is not a celebration necessarily of, of, of life. We have plenty of gold to celebrate Christ, but the frankincense and myrrh that the Magi brought reminds us of Christ's death. That He was born to die. Frankincense and myrrh. Very few people have even ever smelled it. But we talk about it and we throw it away. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. Wise men, nativity, got it. I don't even believe the wise men knew what they, that why they were taking what they were taking because they were not Jews. They were given these gifts to give. The incense that you smell today, again, whether you of the smell of our there's not a And B's lovely work on this star points to what 
the star became for the Gentiles. Christ was born. The Magi came for sinners. That sinners, especially Form and that Christ from that cruciform, that cr that cross. If you want to look on Gol Golgotha, behold the true star of the Gentiles, the one in whom you smell the frankincense and the myrrh. Behold. The star of the Gentiles, Christ, hanging, cruciform. Danny and Francis have a shirt that I like a lot that says, Wise men still seek him. And that's true. But also, wise men find him here. The star of the Gentiles. Christ died for our sins. Christ who was born first for the Jews. It is called great is, be is not because it is just wonderful, it's because one had to come before it. The first commission was go not to the Gentiles, but to the Jews. And they rejected him as the cornerstone. So go now into all Gentiles, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And as Paul says, there is no longer a Greek. The Gentiles, but the star on Golgotha is for us all. What you are smelling, whether you like it or not, you're smelling salvation. And when you leave, perhaps it will remain in your nose. Perhaps it will remain in your clothes. Perhaps you'll like that, perhaps you won't. But you won't forget this. It's the smell of a risen Savior. Thanks be to God. Remember it. Remember the smell well. Because when you smell salvation, what comes to mind is not death and destruction or even what Herod wanted to in the first place. And that smell of frankincense and myrrh were reminded of Jesus. The star of Jesus.
greater than the star of David. Killed on our behalf. Arisen to give us hope and certainty. A sacrifice that filled the nostrils of, the, of God the Father to forgive us all of our sins. On that cross, Christ was the incense to God. Christ was the incense. And it filled the nostrils of God the Father. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. But in the nostrils of God the Father, He was smelling the incense that, he, that, that was uh, so much more powerful than what He was smelling in the temple. He was smelling the incense of forgiveness. And that's what you smell today. This is as close as we can get to smelling salvation. So whether you like it or not goes beyond a matter of perception. It points to the reality that when you smell it, you know you're saved. Because it takes you from your nose, your, olf your olfactory senses, right to an empty tomb. Where we can say, Born from the dead. What that you said?